Welcome to Beyond the Lab, a series by the Office of Career Development in the Biomedical Research Education and Training Department in the Vanderbilt School of Medicine. My name is Kate Stewart, and I'm here today with Sadiqa McKissick. Um, she got her PhD in 2012 in the cell Cellular and Molecular Pathology Department, um, and then she did her postdoc here too. So welcome. Thanks for coming. Thank you for having um, me. So tell me a little bit about your path since uh, your PhD. Mm -hmm. So I was a PhD candidate in uh, cellular and molecular pathology, as you indicated, and I worked under the direction of Sarki Abdul Qadir. Um, and essentially my project was looking at a transcription factor that was specific to the prostate and seeing how it played a role in the initiation and progression of prostate cancer, and we used mice as a model. Okay. And tell me about your postdoc, because it was an interesting experience Yeah, too. so actually, um, so towards the end of my time in my PhD program, I decided to become a science teaching fellow uh, with the Center for Science Outreach. And that gave me time away from the lab, and uh, we went into the school system and helped teachers teach hands-on science lessons. And that kind of gave me an introduction to the Center for Science Outreach, and it also provided me an opportunity to do a postdoc with them. Okay. And so I did a postdoc with them and was considered a scientist in residence in the metro schools. Okay, so what do you do now? So now I am a managing director for a new institute here at Vanderbilt. It's called the Institute for Research on Men's Health. It's a small institute um, under the direction of Derek Griffith. Okay. And he's been at Vanderbilt about two years. Okay, so what do you do in your role? So my role is um, essentially trying to do everything necessary to make sure that the institute operates um, the way that it's supposed to. That varies from doing uh, hiring and personnel, managing um, the research analysts that we have and helping them in the things that we need them to do for the actual research that we conduct. Um, and it can include grant submissions, IRB submissions, preparing grants and papers. So my role is very different um, in terms of what I do on a day-to-day -day basis. However, it um, just incorporates everything necessary to make sure that we run smoothly. Okay, so how is this a good fit for you and your personality and even your skill set? Yeah, so I've always kind of, or towards the end of my time in school, I always kind of leaned more towards being an administrator. I, my personality is, you know, a get it done. That's I'm a get it done girl, you know. Um, I love getting tasks and knowing that these tasks are necessary to reach a greater goal. And so that's essentially what I do on a day-to-day -day basis. Anything that's given to me or that needs to be done, I get it done any means necessary. So okay. that's kind of how this fits in with my personality <laughs> in general. So do you think in your current role as a managing director mm -hmm. that you needed a postdoc for that? Um, I don't necessarily feel that I needed a postdoc, but I definitely feel that my postdoc gave me um, some skill sets um, that helped me in my position. The reason why is because in my lab, I was, did a lot of stuff by myself independently, despite the fact that I was in a lab and communicated with other people. Um, we all had pretty much the same goal. We kind of all had the same background and experience. Um, our projects varied a little bit, but we all were talking about the same thing. Um, my postdoc gave me an opportunity to consult with people from different backgrounds, different experiences, different educational levels. I worked with science teachers. I worked with administrators in the school system. I worked with kids. Um, and having to communicate you know, what I needed or how to help them in different mm -hmm. ways really helped me learn how to consult and work with various different peoples on different level to actually achieve you know, a goal or whatever my goal is now. So what are some of the skills that you gained from your PhD and postdoc experience that are now being used in your current job? So I think that for the most part, the skills that I gained in both my PhD and my postdoc um, that are valuable now include um, attention to detail, my uh, organizational skills, mm -hmm. my um, ability to problem solve, which is huge, um, and my communication skills. Even now in my role, I have gone to a conference and had to present in front of you know, people who have far more experience than I do in their field, and I have the confidence um, to get up and present data and answer questions, which I had to do you know, throughout my PhD program. So, and even at my, um, in my postdoc. So getting up and being confident in front of a group is something that's really important. 
So what skill sets did you need to gain once you started your new job after your training? So basically social and behavioral clinical research is what the institute is surrounded by. So I had to learn about that type of <laughs> clinical research. I had to learn more about the IRB process um, and the intricate details of what's necessary to get those submissions in and what is necessary um, or what is needed for IRB approval. Um, some things, I, you know, you wouldn't think need IRB approval that actually do. Um, I also had to learn more about the intricate details of uh, applying for federal funding because I have to actually help with those submissions. Um, so learning more about some of the intricate details necessary um, for maintaining and funding um, an actual institute is mainly the big things that I learned. Okay. So... In your role in research administration, basically, what activities or um, engagements would you encourage current trainees to pursue to pursue a job that you are currently in? So I think that mainly, you know, it's important to communicate with different people. So, you know, getting in groups and organizations where you have people from different backgrounds, you can kind of gauge different people's personalities and know how to maintain positive relationships with people that don't necessarily have the same personality um, or dedication or, you know, as you do. So that's important. I think also learning more about whatever, you know, so in my field, it's management um, and research administration. So learning more about what is involved in that. So data management and what are the things that out there in which people use for data management. So how did you get your current job? What are the steps that you took to get your new job? So because I was interested in administration, one of the reasons I actually went into my postdoc with the Center for Science Outreach is because I knew I wanted to do administration. I knew that was something that, you know, was a goal of mine. I just wasn't sure what type of administration I wanted to do, if I wanted to do education or if I wanted to do more clinically um, related administration. So actually during my postdoc, one of the things I did was I got a part-time job um, that was doing um, clinical research. And actually, the job posting was in the Brett newsletter, and I responded to it. And um, that actually gave me a little introduction to clinical research. So that was important because it gave me the research experience or the experience in clinical research that helped put information or put that on my resume as right. experience in that field because I was a little different. And most jobs actually required experience, even if it was a short amount of experience or a small amount of experience, I should say. So in doing, applying for the job, I had that experience, which was necessary. And that was something I looked at and saw in those types of jobs. So number one, finding out what's required in the job. That's huge because if you don't know what's required, you don't know how to prepare yourself to be a good candidate. Right. So after that, getting the part-time job um, and putting in a few hours and learning a little bit more about the clinical um, research environment. Um, so that was number two. And then I basically just started looking for jobs in the area. And I think the key thing with this particular job is I scanned it several times and I just said, no, I, I, you know, it's not something that I'm interested in. One, because it was a different type of science. And number two, the Institute is the Institute for Research on Men's Health. And I wasn't <laughs> sure how I would be, you know, how interested I would be in men's health, which now I've learned that it's more, you know, there's more to it than just focusing on men. But one of the things I did after applying for the position, I actually used LinkedIn and I researched and found out who the director was. And I actually sent him an email. And so not only did I communicate and show my interest with the actual position itself, but I also let him know specifically that I was interested in the position and what skill sets I had to actually, you know, meet the requirements that he was looking for. Great. That's <laughs> awesome. So tell me your secrets on how you network. So networking is not necessarily something that is easy for me, um, despite, you know, my personality is the type that, um, you know, it's not always easy for me to approach people I don't know. So um, for, from that aspect, it's a little bit different. Um, I definitely 
do I have used LinkedIn. And actually, I think that's a great tool because you can introduce yourself to people that you don't know and you don't have to walk up to them. Sure. Um, so I definitely have used that a lot. And that's gotten me far because even people I didn't know, but I was in a group with them, you can communicate with them. And I said, hey, I'm interested in this. Can you help me? And believe it or not, those people would know people that could communicate with me. And I would set up meetings with people that had something similar that would meet with me for lunch, didn't know who I was. They looked over my resume. You know, they said, hey, if you want to apply, I'll put you, you know, put me as a reference. Mm -hmm. So using LinkedIn really helped. Um, But believe it or not, I actually talked with other people that weren't necessarily inside my specific career field to get their their opinion about, hey, this is what I'm interested in. What do you think about when you see my resume? What can you pinpoint um, as things that might be interesting or, you know, things that I might highlight to get an outside perspective? Because a lot of the people looking at these resumes are not the directors. They're, they're you know, people that are in the human resources department and they need to be able to interpret and understand what your resume is saying. So that's another aspect, but also trying to communicate and keep in touch with as many people as you can. Keep those business cards and email them, you know, send them cards, you know, so that they don't forget about you. Good. Okay, so what would you wish you knew if you could do it over again um, as a current trainee that you know now? So I wish that I would have known earlier what I really wanted to go into because that way I could have utilized what was in the lab a little bit more. Meaning, um, you know, we applied for grants all the time, but I had no idea what was involved in applying for a grant. So asking to be involved or see things um, a little bit more would have been helpful for me. Um, And even writing a little bit, you know, when it came to some of those grants or seeing some of the reviews and getting an idea of the process, Mm -hmm. Um, even when it comes to IRB, same thing. Um, You know, we had mice. I wasn't involved in the IRB process as much as I could have been and learning things like that. Um, Taking an initiative when it came to managing the lab, there are certain little things that you can do to start gaining uh, management skills and communicating with people that have to you know, not necessarily work under you, but that need to work with you to make sure that everything is in line. Okay. So tell me about your work-life balance. Um, This is something I work on on a continuous basis. Um, You know, it's really important to have, you know, work-life balance. Um, And actually, for me, I have to make sure that I tell myself. So one of my goals this year was actually um, to work out more and to leave work at work. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I've done well. And the way that I did that is I basically signed up for Y membership and I look at the weekly list and see what class I'm going to. And when I know I have something to do, I know I have to leave work and I know I have to go to that class and that gives me my time away. And, you know, I still have my emails that come through and I respond to them. So it helps me make sure that I take care of myself and make sure that I do things because I will, I am the type of person that will stay at work till eight o'clock because things aren't done. And in my job, a lot of things don't get done. So it's important for me to set a stopping point and make sure that I put goals for myself ahead of, you know, goals for everyone else. Good. (laughs) So what words of wisdom would you have, um, to current trainees who are starting their job search? Um, So the words of wisdom I would say is, you know, explore. Um, Think about the things that you want to do after, Um, especially if you want to do non-traditional. Look and see what's out there. There are so many jobs and so much variation. It's really important for you to do your research to see what exactly you want to do. And I think the biggest words of wisdom I can give is if you know what you want to do, Look at the job descriptions of these jobs. See what they are looking for. Try and figure out how you can transfer the skills you've learned into the skills that they're looking for. See if you need to volunteer somewhere. See if you need to do additional things to help you either gain access to those skills or gain access to the people that can help you get to where you need to go. So it's really important for you to prepare yourself because at the end of the day, unfortunately, you know, applying for a job takes a lot of effort and a lot of time. And nowadays it's harder because jobs don't come around as often and it's you can't get a job. Well, I shouldn't say you can't, but it's hard to get a job in a short period of time. 
So you also need to start looking early. It's better to have a job early than to be looking for a job when you need a job. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for coming. I appreciate it. <laughs> no problem. Thank you.